Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about how to create an AWS S3 bucket and secure it using an IAM policy so that only an IAM role can access a specific bucket. So with that, let's get started. There's a lot of headlines that are out there about data breaches and information that's being leaked. And 99% of the time, if it's on a public cloud, it's due to public cloud misconfiguration. So today what I wanna talk about is how you can actually create an S3 bucket and lock down that bucket to be secure so that only you can access it. And more specifically, how to lock it down so that one user can access one bucket and a different user can access another bucket. So today we're gonna go ahead and create a couple buckets. We're gonna create an IAM user and we're gonna create a custom policy on that IAM user uh, that will then only access that one bucket. So with that, let's get started. So go ahead and log into your Amazon uh, console. You can see I'm logged in here. And um, we're gonna log into, let's go ahead and create the buckets first. So let's log into S3. Get started. So I don't have any buckets right now, but we're gonna create two buckets. So we're gonna say, uh, I should have access to this bucket. And we're gonna make this pretty straightforward. Oh, sorry, I already did capitals. Perfect. And I'm not gonna really worry about any of these settings right now. I am gonna block public access. This is really important unless you want public access, but for what we're talking about right now, we're trying to lock it down so that only a specific user or application has access to the bucket. So we're gonna block public access and just create a vanilla bucket. So let's go ahead and create another bucket that says I should not have access to this bucket. And again, same thing. Perfect, there we go. So we have these two buckets. Um, so let's go ahead and get access to both buckets and then we'll lock it down. So to do that, we're gonna go to IAM, that's where you can create user access keys. And we're gonna go to users, and we're gonna create a new user, and we're gonna say bucket access test. And for this, we're just gonna do programmatic access and get the keys that way. So I'm gonna attach the default S3 all access uh, uh, policy, the S3 full access policy. So this will be give access to all S3 resources. However, it won't let you access uh, EC2 or uh, Beanstalk or any of the other services. So at least it's, it's locked down to just S3. But as you'll see in a second, you'll be able to access everything in S3. So here's the access key and here's the secret key. Once you've created these, if you don't already know, you won't be able to see these again. So let's just quickly save them in a notepad. You don't need to um, save them forever because you can always just refresh them if you lost them. But uh, for our test, we'll just save them here. Perfect. All right, so now we have the user. Now let's go ahead and view the buckets and, and uh, manipulate them. So the tool that I use for doing this is called S3 Browser. It's a freeware tool. There's a few tools out there. FileZilla does it. Uh, I think if you do the uh, paid one, I know Cloudberry, they have a nice one as well. Um, and it has a free one. And if you use the paid one, it has a, a bit more features. Um, I personally just use S3 Browser. So you can go ahead and download and install that. So we'll do that now. Okay, so now that we have S3 Browser installed, we'll just fire it up and get access to the system. So I currently have an old account on here. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. And let's go ahead and create the new account. And I wanna access this using the keys that I just created. So test access account. And I'm gonna use those keys from that IAM that I just created. You can encrypt these. I'm not gonna do it right now, but I would recommend encrypting uh, your keys with a password. That way, if you ever get a virus or something on your computer, um, they're at least somewhat encrypted. It's not the best uh, once you actually store these keys somewhere else, like maybe in your NAS or whatever application you're trying to use them in, um, you, you're gonna wanna try to encrypt them. But part of why we're doing this is if these keys get compromised, um, they have very limited access. They only can access what you specifically wanted. So at least you can limit the attack uh, footprint. 
So here's the um, username and password. So I'll go ahead and create the account, save changes, and boom, I can see my two buckets. So I can say I can see the one that I should have access to this bucket and I should not have access to this bucket. So let's go ahead and um, create some files in there. Oops, sorry. And let's just go test 01. And let's put some data in here. Great. <clears throat> so I'm going to put this text file that I just created into both buckets. And if you've never used S3 before, um, it's kind of like an FTP. You can kind of just drag and drop. You can see files get uploaded. It's a really nice, nice program that way. And the other ones I mentioned can do the same thing. So now I have two buckets. I've got the same file in both of them. I can do whatever I want to them. I can delete them. I can see the files inside of them. I can see versioning. I can. I have full access to them uh, using these keys. So let's go ahead and lock it out so I can't have access to the, I should not have access to this bucket. So to do this, I'm gonna reference uh, a blog that Amazon has here um, and that talks about either IAM policies or S3 policies. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to do an IAM policy and lock it down that way. So the IAM policy is limiting the username and password that we created and what it can do. Um, you can create an S3 bucket policy and that basically puts a protection in front of the S3 bucket and says, hey, this is who's allowed to access and who's not allowed to do that. So I'll show that to you quickly in a moment, but the IAM policy is one that I would recommend more for 90% of use cases, this would be fine. So this blog does a really good job of explaining uh, which policy to use and when. Uh, it, is, it is a pretty old blog, but still very relevant. You can see it's from 2013. Uh, but I'll link it in the description below so you guys can reference it if you want to see more, de more details than what we're covering today. Okay, so for this, we're going to do an IAM policy. So let's copy his example here. And we're going to go back. And here's this bucket test. And it's currently using the Amazon S3 full access. So let's go ahead and create a policy. Uh, we're going to paste the JSON in here. And this will basically say allow access to the bucket that we created. So we only want to have access to the one bucket. So if we look back to S3, I'm going to copy the ARN of the I should have access to this bucket. So you're going to click that, hit copy ARN, and we will overwrite the ARN here. Now, because we're using um, because we're using S3 browser, if I go ahead and create this policy, so I'm going to say demo access policy, uh, it won't list the buckets. So I've created the policy, and you'll see here in a second if I attach that policy to this user. Uh, so add permission policy, add an existing one, demo access policy. This is the one I just created. And I'm going to remove this S3 full access. What's going to happen in, in the S3 browser if I go to refresh is it's going to say that I'm not going to have access to these. So what you see here is that is now in the S3 browser, once I've applied the, uh, the rules to limit it to the one bucket, you're going to see you're not allowed to get the buckets list because all we've done in the IAM is just allowed it access to the bucket. So the S3 browser is already honoring those rules. Anybody that uses those keys in the, the command line interface or a, um, a GUI like this won't be able to access the bucket. But let's let's at least list the buckets so we can uh, actually test a few more things out. So I'm going to go back to the IAM policy. So here's the demo access policy. And this time, instead of editing it in JSON, I'm going to show you how we can edit it using their GUI. So I'm going to hit edit policy. And here's their visual editor. So here it is in JSON. Here's the Here's the rules we just applied. Here's the visual editor that you can kind of see the specifics of it. Let's go ahead and add another permission. We're going to say it's 4S3. And what we're going to say is that it's allowed to list all the buckets. And that's it. We're going to add that to the policy, save changes. And now, if we hit refresh, Now we can see both buckets. However, 
as you can see, I'm getting access denied on the I should not have access to this bucket. So I cannot see anything in this bucket. I can't copy files to it, for example. Um, access denied. But if we look at the one that I should have access to, I can see the file. I can go ahead and delete the file. I can do whatever I want to this bucket. I can get upload it again and I have full access. But the one that I should not have access to, I can't do anything. However, I can see the list of all the buckets uh, just because I gave that policy that access. If you don't want to do that, you can just remove that one line. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. Uh, there's a lot of different security policies that you can apply to Amazon and uh, it can get a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna cover a number of videos on different options that you can do for that. But you should always be looking, especially on the IAM roles, you should always be looking to create a policy as restrictive as possible. So today we covered how to create buckets, how to create the IAM policy and how to restrict that user uh, to that policy and that it could only access that one bucket and couldn't access other buckets. Uh, like I said, most compromises happen because of misconfigurations in the cloud. So understanding these security options and, and the tools and applying them properly is very important and also testing it. So knowing tools like S3 browser or other, you know, using the AWS CLI, whatever it might be, make sure you use those tools to, to test expected behavior uh, that no one can access your data if you don't want them to, uh, you know, assuming you're not doing public access or something like that. So uh, I'm gonna do a couple more videos on AWS S3. I have another one in the, in, that I'll put in the description below about how you can actually mount AWS S3 to your Mac or to your Windows machine. So you can basically get infinite storage. They're all their cloud uh, capacity right on your local machine and uh, you can kind of back up your data and you're protected from crypto viruses and stuff like that. So that's in the description below. Otherwise, we'll be covering other security options in AWS and other clouds. So make sure you subscribe to uh, get notified about those. Thanks guys, have a good day.